Hello YouTube, this is Charlie426, and today we have the review of the Premium Bond Light Exclusive, or P Bond Light Exclusive, HUC Pell Rider D2. Now, first of all, I would like to mention, uh, or more like apologize for the late review for this kit, because I actually had this kit for about a few weeks, or even a few months, I can't remember when I received it, but I did not review it right away, because there were a lot of other stuff that I wanted to review at the time. So, uh, this review will be a simple review, meaning that I won't be going articulation because, number one, I have reviewed the Pell Rider Calvary, which is right over there, and has the exact same uh, articulation as far as I know. And so I'll be doing a quick comparison with the Calvary, not with the regular Pell Rider, because at this point I don't think it's really necessary to review it with that kit. So I'll be doing some comparisons with the Pell Rider Calvary and show you guys some differences, and we'll call it a day. Alright, so before we go on to the review, let's talk about components. So, first of all, what you get, what you get of course, is obviously the Pell Rider D2. Now, the D2 background story, I may have confused it with a different Pell Rider variant, but this is based, according to the wiki, this is basically the Titans were trying to make a better, you know, mass production type mobile suit, uh, like the Jim Quill. So, basically, they were tr uh, trying to find something to replace the Jim Quill while. The Jim Quill is, is actually one of the more better mobile suits out there. Obviously, time the more time passes, it will get you know outdated at some point. So uh, the Pell Rider D2 was actually one of the candidates, but of course, they I don't think it never happened because obviously the I'm assuming the cost did not match. But anyway, other than that, so you get the multi-purpose hands for the hands and two beam saber hilts on the backpack. And here are the stuff that you are supposed to get. So all of these are pretty much identical that we got from the Pell Rider Calvary. So I'll go with this quickly. So number one, we get the shield. Yes, it's all sticker heaven, but the stickers that are used on the shield are one of those plastic type stickers. So you get this extra extra gloss going on here. And once again, we get a shield connector right over here, which allows you to rotate here and there. So nothing too special about that, but we've seen this before, so nothing too special. Now we get this bendy wire. So this bendy wire is meant for for the Shekina. So this is the Shekina, which actually, for those who play the Gundam Battle Operation uh, 2, uh, should know what this weapon is. It's a very compact, all in, like basically all-in-one weapon. So number one, we get a Gatling gun, so it uses bullets. We get missile launchers or grenade launchers. I keep forgetting the differences. So that's that. Another physical uh, explosion type weapon in there. And then a beam gun or a beam cannon. This is more of a cannon, yeah. So yeah, we have three in a one, you know, weapon here. And this is one of the best weapons in GBO2 if you ask, if you ask me. Or at least the ones that the more frequent ones I actually use. So number one, uh, this is the place where you connect the hand and then you can connect the arm with this peg and then you get this extra handle going on here. Once again, we've seen this before in the cavalry, nothing too special. And this is where the bending wire connects and then the other end tip should be connecting to the one that this battery package thing going on on, to, on the side skirt. So that's that. We've seen this before, nothing special. Uh, once again, bendy wire. And just uh, for reference, so if you don't want the missile launcher to be open at, at all times, you can always replace it with this one, the cover. So if you want to have a, a closed up version. And yes, if you are wondering, if you have both of these, if you have two of these, you can dual wield on the Pale Rider. And then once again, we get a typical beam rifle. I believe this is the exact same beam rifle that we saw previously on the Pale Riders and on the Gundam Unit 4 and 5. So nothing too special about that. Although be careful because uh, I think I've seen someone who accidentally broke the front tip of the beam rifle. Uh, since we have two beam saber hilts, we get two beam saber effect parts. Nothing too special about that. And then we get a open hand for the uh, for the left hand for some reason. And we get a beam javelin, which we once again I believe the Pell Rider Cavalry was the first, or might have been the first HUC kit to actually have this. Uh, beam javelin. Now I'm not sure if uh, was this actual clear effect part. Now we have seen some uh, beam javelins in the past, but I believe they weren't clear. So yeah, uh, and then the handle, the be the pillar of cavalry version would had a had a white handle. This one has a uh, you know Titans color handle. All right, so now let's go for the stickers. So obviously we have the sh stickers for the shield, nothing too special. And then here we have this. Now the Pale Rider D2 does not have a Hades system or does not have like a program to enhance its ability. So which is why we get only one set of stickers entirely. So obviously I did not use every sticker here because once again, it's going to get extremely messy. And some areas like these with these dark color, I feel like it was unnecessary to use these stickers because the kit is already in this dark color. And I feel like it, it would be awkward to use these uh, once again on top of it so which which is I did not use and then these white ones were obviously for the vents on the legs once once again very painful to apply so I did not do that and I'm I ran out of white marker so I didn't even apply that 
here we have one for the I believe these are for the back skirts and then here we have some parts for the legs which I uh, I believe these are for the legs and which I did not apply so I'll try to point out what part that required a sticker as much as possible so we've seen these stickers now obviously being a pre-owned Bondi kit there's always some leftover parts so let's go over the leftover parts quickly so uh, let me get everything on here there we go all right so number one we get some leftover poly caps nothing too special about that we've seen these before uh here we go so here we have another part so we have these leftover parts now uh these were technically used on gundam unit four and five uh, i'm not sure if these are the exact same parts but uh technically they were also used on the pale rider space of uh, the pale rider space unit or the space variant so uh you actually you would actually connect a few parts with these onto the back so that's that and then let's see what we got now unlike the pale rider cavalry you do, uh the d2 does not does not have a fuel caster on connected to its backpack which is why we have this leftover piece uh and then this is the a plate so this a plate i believe is from the original pale rider kit so we have the original legs we have the original f uh the face front part uh the back part you still use the same parts which is why we don't have a leftover of those we have the neck part we have the front leg armor we have the thrusters that go connects to the leg uh, some part of the feet the side skirts the arm parts some of the arm parts you actually use half of it from the original we have the original beam sabers the back skirt front uh, back skirt front skirt uh parts as well so you do get a good amount of chunk of the original pair right their parts and then here we have the C plate. So once again, here we have some thruster left or parts from the previous uh, versions as well. Uh, and then more of these vent vents parts as well. So nothing too special. And then here we have these parts. So uh, now these parts, I believe, is are also from the original Pale Rider. So we have the original chest piece, the backpack. We have the feet. The, we have the actual uh, parts that connect to the arm. These are supposed to be like small beam guns that connect to the arms. I believe the Pell Rider, original Pale Rider had that. I'm still I, I'm still slightly confused if the space variant had that. Uh, but also I believe the G the unit, uh, the Gundam Unit 4 and 5 had those as well. We have the original head plates and the part that goes inside the head as well. All right, so we've seen those as well. So now instead of the articulation, let's go over the quick comparison. All right, so um, obviously, once again, uh, for those who don't remember, the after the Pell Rider Cavalry was announced and took pre-orders, not so, and after a few weeks, I believe, or a few days, they actually announced the D2. So they really wanted to, you know, milk this milk this mold a lot. But still, uh, I had to try it out because once again, I at this point I have four Pell Riders. Uh, I may as well finish the collection. So uh, there are a few more Pell Riders that need to, needs to come out, like the Pell Rider Red, the, the Pell Rider Dullahan, and then the new Pell Rider that's going to show up in the GBO2 or Gundam Out Operation 2 uh, story mode game. I think that's called the Pell Rider White or White Pell Rider, something like that. All right, so let's start from top top to bottom. Now I do prefer the D the D2 compared to the uh, Calvary because of the amount of stickers going on here, or at least uh, some stickers were unnecessary to apply onto the uh, onto the D2 because of the color scheme. So uh, one of the biggest differences is obviously the head. Now the head. Uh, the Calvary now has a V fin, like a typical Gundam. But for the D2, the background is that uh, they did they did take a reference from the Pale Rider uh, Dolohan and Calvary, if I remember correctly. So uh, they actually turned back to the original head design. So uh, they thought it was unnecessary for this design as well. So they wanted to keep the original Pale Rider design. So they kept that as well. Now the shoulders, uh, nothing too special, but of course the Calvary does, does have a better color separation here because of the color scheme, white and black, but still, you still use these vent stickers on the, onto the shoulders, which I really don't like. Oops, and I accidentally uh, popped off a ball joint. So yeah, the, there are four there's four vent stickers in total for the shoulder, so not the best thing. And then they still use, but of course, in this case, uh, they do have the vent stickers for the top body. Of course, the Pell Rider Cavalry had a much bigger sticker. This one actually is just a small square sticker for some reason. And then obviously, we still have the st same sticker chest here, so that's still there, not the best. And then the front skirts, once again... Um, you, you're supposed to apply another sticker on top of here, but I didn't because it was the same color. And then we still use the white stickers for the front skirts. Uh, this one, on the other hand, had a huge big difference on the stickers. They just give you a big big one as you may, and they made you slap it on there. So that's that. And then looking at the back here, 
Uh, once again, I did not apply anything on for the back skirt, but as you can see, if you remember, the Pale Rider Cavalry did a, re require four stickers, and the D2 also requires the same amount of stickers. But once again, being the same color, I did not apply that. And then looking at the backpack, uh, you can see the Cavalry has a fuel caster and has six thrusters, uh, but for the D2, you only get four, so that's that. And as you can see, the connector here, there's only meant for four. So they, these are technically slightly different mold, molds, if you ask me, because we don't have actually six holes here. You actually have only four, as you can see. There's no middle one in between. And then looking at the legs, I think they are the exact same legs. So same thruster, same design. And once again, even the lower parts here. Obviously, these parts have... Uh, for some reason, I don't think they gave stickers for these thrusters on the inside, but they once again they still give you white stickers for the in, on these inner parts for the thrusters right over here, so you can get uh, do them white. But once again, I felt like coloring those white or applying the stickers would break the break the old color, you know, the balance. So I did not apply that. So that's that. Uh, all right. Oh, whoop, whoops. There we go. And I believe for the Pillar of Cavalry, we had these knee stickers going on here. I believe they uh, they do give you stickers here, but instead of the entire knee, because of the color scheme, they only give you stickers for the vents onto the knee section here, inside here. So, yeah. And then for, for some reason, they also give you dark stickers so you can apply on top of this part right over here. I really don't know why that was necessary, but once again, yeah, I did not apply those. So yeah, other than that, these are pretty much almost the identical kits. There's just a few difference, like the different backpack or basically different amount of thrusters and then different head style. So it's really up to you which one you want to get. They're practically the same kits, but different like different details in certain areas. All right, so we've seen the basics of, of that. So I think uh, the only question that everybody wants to see is that can we dual wield the Shekinah? And the answer is I'm going to go with yes. So number one, granted this is, uh, the Shekinah does have a left and right thing going on here. Obviously it's only meant for the right arm like this because yeah. But still, if you don't mind that because you can still apply it. So the, the connecting part is pretty simple. You can see there's a handle there and then there's a peg here that connects to the back of the arm right over here. So it's a pretty simple connection. Uh, now the hands might, the ball joint on mine for the hands are very loose for some reason, but because of the extra peg, you don't need to worry about the, the loose handle as long as you connect it properly to the arm. So we'll do that again. And there we go, full, full connection. And there we go, bam. So if you want to have like a dual wheeling Shekinah, of course, I would assume this would uh, drain the energy or the battery packs of the unit very fast, but still it is possible. And yeah, as I mentioned, this one uh, regarding the stickers, yeah, you don't have a red visor. Even the Pell Rider Cavalry, while it did have a Hades system exam, uh, Hades system, for example, and you did get double stickers you don't get a red visor because obviously that the visor never turned red for the cavalry and the d2 not having a 80s system for example you do not get any options for the for those stickers so yeah so if you don't want to deal with those hades or if, if you don't want to deal with if you want to deal with less stickers, i think i think you, you should go with the d2 because obviously for the because of the color scheme you don't like you can just pass on a few stickers of course there are some there are some essential stickers out there but still uh, I say it's not as bad as the cavalry. So yeah, at this point, it's really up to you on what you, what you want to choose. Anyway, that's pretty much it for the review. This was the review of the Premium Manda exclusive HUC Pale Rider D2. If you guys got any questions or requests, leave a comment below. This was a simple review because I, I've already reviewed the one in the past. Anyway, until then, see you guys next time.